I have a review for you here for a program that's called Animationist. As you might expect, it's an animation program, but it's primarily aimed at YouTubers creating their little short intros, and it's fairly easy and simple to use. You have down here the timeline like you would in any other animation or video editor program. The timeline is down here, as you can see, there is the keyframes. You have the editing area and preview area here. You have your various tools up here, such as text or create a eclipse, rectangle, line, uh, add clip art. Let's just create some clip art so I'm not actually going to add it to it. I'm just going to show you that there is a large variety of clip art. Well, fairly large anyway. And you've got different categories such as animal tracks, you've got arrows, uh, bubbles, cameras, electricity, even Halloween. There is a large selection here. Let's just cancel that. You also have other. You can add a star, things like that. You also have background, let's click background. It's warning me because I've already got one, so let's just cancel that for now. You also then have here presets. If we click that, it brings up some pre uh, preset effects. This at the moment is for backgrounds because I have the background selected. And as you can see, there is some various options here. So let's just sort of circle through, cycle through some here. Then, you know what? Let's select one like this and hit apply. Now I'm going to hit play. Now please bear in mind that I am recording with a screen capture program and I am on a MacBook, not an iMac or a Mac Pro. I'm only on a MacBook and at the same time as using this program I am also recording a video. So it may lag, but that's not the program. Okay, I'm just going to do it one second. And okay, and if you look over to the right here, you have the various effects I've added, such as clip art, text, some more clip art, background pattern. Then you can go to say text here, you can hide it, lock it, hit this button here to bring up some of the settings, such as retype the text, change the font size, its width, its line height. You can also change the type of uh, fill and stroke. You can do the position in here, the rotation, scaling, and a bit of all sorts. In fact, it's even got blend modes, like in Photoshop. Now, if I go up here, you also have various fill options from here, such as fill with color or shaded material. Let's actually, there's also generated pattern, but let's go to shaded material. Let's hit replace for now, I can always undo it. Then we can select flat or round, I'm going to do round, and as you can see we've already got a bit of a changed effect here. Now we can change our settings here, and I'm going to do waves I think, edit shaded material. So this brings up this nice little editor here, which kind of looks like something you'd expect from a full 3D program, even though this is pretty much a 2D program. Let's just close that one sec. So at the moment the lighting and the shading on the text is primarily black and white but we can hit here we can change it to something like green. Change the second light to something like blue. Oops, what was that? There we go. We could also duplicate one of the lights, or remove one of the lights, or add yet another light. Uh, change the background colour here as well, as well as brightness settings and various settings here, including our mode such as add or replace. Let's just hit OK. There we go. Let's play it again. As you can see, I have a bit of a glow effect as well which is, let me see, here it is, it's called a HDR glow effect. Oops. I'm going to create a new 
version. I'm going to close that in the background. I've got a full screen in a minute. You can use full screen as well. So there you go. And then if you want to get to the bar up here, you just hover over. Now, to create, you know, to start creating from a new file, you can go to text, add text. Let's just leave it at that for now. Now, let's move it off. Whoops. Didn't want to do that. Let's uh, make sure I have it all selected move it all off the screen or let's move it actually below our workspace that's let's say four seconds in that should be about four seconds we want it up here and in fact let's center it there we go now let's play that it's as easy as that to create a basic animation. I know that isn't exactly any much, nothing particularly fancy, but it just shows you can get a basic effect of text flying in for, uh, as quick as that. Just a couple clicks of the button. Then we can go to background. It randomly created a background there for us. So now we have a very basic intro with just a few clicks. Then we could uh, sort of spice it up a bit by doing, you know, adding some clip art things like that, and we can have you can scale it easily, like in Photoshop as well. We can move that. Let's play now. Right now, what I'm going to do is to show you that here I haven't mentioned before. You can add a movie file, so you could say have a your own little animation for a background that you've already made in another program or maybe you download a film from the internet and put as a background instead of using their own or you can import your own image files as well you can also apply effects here let's just select this hit effects you can bevel there you go doesn't look very nice mind you like that but you can adjust it as delete that you could blur it, let's say motion blur you can do various things to the colour, you can extrude, so let's actually check that out there, that's almost given it a 3D effect it actually looks quite interesting, let's just delete it anyway though you can do glow, now this is how in the previous example file I showed you I had a HDR glow but you're not restricted to that you can do a plain glow a gradient glow in a glow in a gradient glow a blur glow this is probably the best one and the one I'd probably use the most you can also use various little masks there there's other such as reflection which actually looks nice I'm actually just going to apply it there is also a few other categories including shadow so you can also if you don't like the size in fact I don't even know what size this is well it looks like a thousand is it by 1750 let's have a look anyway no it's actually meant to be 1920 by 1080 you can also size to fit the objects like that you can also size to fit in window like that you can type it manually here so say you want it for a, a full HD video you could type in 1920 by 1080 you can then change background color if you haven't got a background already you can clip layers to the canvas you can show a grid and change grid color, various things like that, show the rulers or not. Hit OK. You can export. So you can export as a movie file, which is probably the option you use the most often. You can export it as an animated gift, share it in an email program, messages, or airdrop, export it as a single image or a PDF of images or a Photoshop document or layers. You can even copy it, just copy it to clipboard. You can then also share it on Facebook, Twitter, in an email, messages, airdrop, or add to iPhoto. 
here under export for movies you get your typical H.264 which is the one you probably want to stick with the most especially if you don't know what you're doing JPEG, ProRes, a couple of other ProRes and a GIF you probably want this option the most frames per second you have third yeah, you probably got to use mostly 24 25 30 or 60 let's just leave it on 30 you can apply select a start time and end time when you're exporting or you export the whole thing you can actually which is nice you can add anti-alias in to make it less jaggy I would well it depends upon the spec of your system but the more the better of course if you your computer can handle it it may make the export time go up by quite a bit you can also adjust the zoom factor and if you don't want a background you can actually apply a transparent background you can also apply quality so you have high normal or low if you can get away with it I'd have it on the highest setting up here you can go to preferences various options here for add ob show add object animation so if you're actually having problems with this on a laptop and it's sort of stuttering or whatever, you can turn some of these off to help. You also have enable snapping. I would probably have that on, but if you find moving things around is a little bit difficult, I would turn that off. And clipboard. Specify the settings used when you export the canvas to the clipboard. So you can have it at 300 dpi, which is dots per inch, or anti-aliasing. So when you're exporting it to the clipboard, you may want it to uh, be lower, or in fact you may know you can get away with it, so you might actually want it on the higher settings. You can also have a transparent background or not there as well. At the time of making this video, I'm using the latest version, which has only just come out, version 1.1.3, which has 10.10 new enemy bug fixes. From the menu bar, you can also get to file, to open and save, to save as a template, to export here as your various options. You can go to objects and add the objects, which is basically these over here, but here. You can also edit your canvas from here, apply vertical or horizontal guides, zoom in and zoom out, zoom to fit, things like that, playback from here. Window here, you can show presets. And this is some um, background presets basically. And you can show the timeline or get rid of it to get it out of the way if you don't want it at the moment. And you can actually show animation presets. It does have some a few presets for an animation. Let's actually go here and apply this. But I don't want to apply it to that, I want to apply it to the text. So now we have some presets for text animations. If you hover over it, you get a preview. So let's say we want to apply this. You can then change the color if you don't like the green sort of flash. You can change it to something like, say, blue. You can also adjust the start time, its duration, how long it lasts, its radius cancel or apply. Now if we go over to the timeline let's play it. There, it's a very basic preset but there are others and you don't have to use a preset anyway you can always select you know create it yourself the animation if we select this you get a few different ones basically there is, actually isn't as many as there is for the text select the background you get even less down here is a button here to toggle your presets as well here is the button to toggle the timeline and here is the animation toggle. Here you can zoom in or zoom out. You can have a high quality playback preview, medium or low depending upon how well your computer is handling the preview. Okay so let's have a look at this preview in high quality.
and what happened there was I just changed the background but I changed it at the end that's why the background didn't appear to the end but ignore that as you can see it started a little bit let's try low quality as you can see it seems to handle it a little bit better so it depends upon your system specs okay what do I think of it a great simple program well it's not simple it's plenty of features but it's easy to use great easy use program to create intros for your short films your YouTube videos whatever it might be so I do recommend it I'll put a link in the description to the website and the price and please like and share this video and if you could do me a huge favor and subscribe to my channel as it only takes a few seconds and it helped me out a lot thanks